What will happen in the 2020s? Well, predicting the future isn't easy. So before I give my prediction, let's revisit some past failures. Back in 68, Stanford biologist Paul Ehrlich predicted, I quote, by 1985, enough millions will have died to reduce the Earth's population to some acceptable level, like 1.5 million people. Why did he predict that? Well, as he put in his book, The Population Bomb, too many cars, too many factories, too much pesticide, too little water, too much carbon dioxide, blah, 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 and so on. And all can be traced easily to too many people. That's right. It's all your fault. Ehrlich was an early proponent of the overpopulation hypothesis. And chances are very high that you, like I, have been educated to believe this theory. But, of course, the flip side of theory is evidence. And what does the evidence show? Well, population back in 68 was around 4 billion. Today, it's 7.5 billion. Only 100 times more than Ehrlich's prediction and nearly double what it was then. And yet, living standards have risen. Famine is a thing of the past and lifespans are up worldwide. The evidence is Paul Ehrlich was wrong. As the late great nuclear physicist Richard Feynman put it, it does not matter who you are or how smart you are or what title you have or how many papers your site has published. If your prediction is wrong, then your hypothesis is wrong, period. Of course, it's easy to look back with hindsight and mock Ehrlich, but even way back then, there were people who said he'd be wrong too. One of them was Julian Simon, and he bet $10,000 that any five resources Ehrlich could name would not only be more plentiful in the future, but also less expensive. Ehrlich, being the super genius he was, accepted the bet, but Ehrlich lost. Ehrlich was wrong. The price of everything went down. So, and as he handed over the $10,000 check, all he could say, all he, only, his only saving grace was a smart-ass comment that the only thing that will never be in short supply is imbeciles, not knowing that he was referring to himself. Did this ruin Ehrlich's career? Oh, no. No, no, no. He continued educating people at Stanford. He won numerous awards, including Distinguished Scientist, he consulted with the United Nations, and he was a guest on The Tonight Show 18 times. Apparently, tales of doom are good for ratings. But let's move on to another failed prediction. In 1970, University of California professor Kenneth Watts said, the world had been chilling sharply for about 20 years. If, pre if present trends continue, the world will be about four degrees colder for the global mean temperature in 1990 but 11 degrees colder in the year 2000. This is about twice what it would take to put us into another ice age. Ooh, scary. Yes, that's right. Fears of global cooling were all the rage back in the 70s. And it wasn't just what? According to an article in Newsweek, meteorologists are almost unanimous in the view that three quarters of a century of extraordinary mild conditions, the earth seems to be cooling down. Hmm, the scientists were almost unanimous. That sounds familiar. Where have I heard that before? You know, I remember watching this on TV when I was a teenager. The data shows that average temperatures in the Arctic have fallen dramatically over the last 30 years. In most locations, the drop has been about two degrees centigrade. At that rate, the descent to ice age temperatures could take less than 200 years. It is not only the lonely Arctic that has cooled. The whole northern hemisphere is growing steadily colder. There is little doubt that someday the ice will return. At least eight times in the past million years, it has advanced and retreated with clockwork regularity. If we are unprepared for the next advance, the result could be hunger and death on a scale unprecedented in all of history. What scientists are telling us now is that the threat of an ice age is not as remote as they once thought. During the lifetime of our grandchildren, Arctic cold and perpetual snow could turn most of the inhabitable portions of our planet into a polar desert. 
scared the hell out of me. I mean, it's Spock, people. How can it be wrong? I was scared witless that my home was going to be overrun by a mile-thick glacier. So what happened? That's not what happened. <laughs> was it 4 degrees colder in 1990? Nope. Was it 11 degrees colder in 2000? Nope. It's a bit warmer now than it was in 1970. And by a bit, I mean less than one degree centigrade. And my childhood home back in Canada, still there, no glacier in sight. But whoever, <laughs> yellow, but whoever moved in painted it yellow and that's a disaster in itself. But nothing I can do about that one either. Anyways, Watt and Newsweek and the scientific consensus were wrong. And what was the supposed cause of all this supposed cooling catastrophe? Humans, of course. It's your fault again. As Life magazine put it, by 1985, air pollution will have reduced the amount of sunlight reaching Earth by one half. Yep. Back then, pollution was the cause of cooling. But not to worry. Just a few years later, pollution would be blamed for something else which takes us to a newer failure. In 2004, the Guardian newspaper reported that, I quote, climate change over the next 20 years could result in a global catastrophe costing millions of lives in wars and natural disasters. A secret report suppressed by U.S. defense chiefs warns that major European cities will be sunk beneath rising seas as Britain is plunged into a Siberian climate by 2020. Nuclear conflict, mega droughts, famine, and widespread rioting will erupt across the world. Oh my God! The usual cheerleaders of doom swarm like sharks around this prediction. I mean, after all, the Pentagon is not some wacko left-wing tree-hugging society. So if they were making such predictions, it must be true, right? Well, it's almost 2020, so let's see. Major European cities sunk beneath the seas? Nope. Nuclear conflict? Nope. Mega droughts? Well, there's droughts, but there's always droughts. Mega? Not so much. Famine? Nope. Food production is up worldwide. Widespread rioting? Well, France and Hong Kong are pretty widespread, but that's not over climate. And finally, Britain will be a Siberian climate by 2020. God, that's just two days from now. And the weather forecast for London, eight degrees Celsius. In Siberia, about minus 40. So missed it by about 50 degrees. Sorry. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Pentagon is wrong. What a surprise. Well, that's enough of past prediction errors. Let's get real. Right here and right now with some famous recent predictions. The world is gonna end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is, your, your biggest issue is how are we gonna pay for it? And People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? All right, let's have a big round of applause for the bartender and the autistic kid with their tales of doom. But now let's get to my prediction for 2020s, which is just a little bit different. Here it is. By the end of this decade, we'll see less poverty, less child mortality, lifespans will be longer, resources more plentiful, global temperatures will be within one degree of where they are now, sea levels within two millimeters, there'll be more whales, more polar bears, more trees, and more abundance for more people than ever before. Yes, the future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. Think I'm wrong? Cool. I'll bet $10,000 to anyone who wants to bet along with Greta and AOC. Talk is cheap. Show me the money. I study nuclear science. 
I love my classes. I got a crazy teacher who wears dark glasses. Things are going great, and they're only getting better. I'm doing all right, getting good grades. Future's so bright. I gotta wear shades. I gotta wear shades. Show me the money, baby.